Hello everybody and welcome back, Frank here. So I wanna to talk today to those of you out there that are Mac users. So I use both Mac and Windows just because of the nature of what I do. I have certain things that will only work in a Mac environment and I have certain things that'll only work in a Windows environment and I really look for those things that can work in both. One of those things that I wish would work in both would be Microsoft Whiteboard, but it doesn't. There's a great downloadable Microsoft Whiteboard app, which I've done previous videos on, that runs really well in Windows. And there's an iOS Whiteboard app, which is really great, and that runs on iPads and iPhones. Although I don't know if I'd want to use an I, uh, iPhone for a Whiteboard. But there is no downloadable Mac OS X version of Microsoft Whiteboard. And it's a real shame. So it, what it means is that we have to use the web-based version and you think, well, okay, I can live with that. No, you probably can't. It's not very good. It's, uh, in fact, it's really bad. And so if you can't use the web-based version, you don't want to run the Windows version in a virtual machine, as an example, and you, you're using a Mac computer, what are you to do? Well, stick around. I'll show you how we can get around that limitation by using the iOS version in conjunction with our Mac. But first, let me, let me just quickly take you and show you why you do not want to use the web-based version of Microsoft Whiteboard on a Mac. Okay, if I go into this uh, URL here on Microsoft, it's a little bit of a long URL, but it doesn't really matter because when I go here, you'll notice that I have the Microsoft Whiteboard and I can get Whiteboard for Windows or I can get Whiteboard for iOS. And conspicuously absent is the Whiteboard for Mac OS X. So what am I left to do? Well, if I go into Office 365 and I'll just log in, uh, this will actually show me my, I've already logged in by default. And if I go into all of my apps, so I'll get into all apps, and if I scroll down, you'll notice I have the whiteboard. And underneath the whiteboard here, it'll ask me to log in and authenticate. So I'll go ahead and authenticate here. And you'll notice that my whiteboard here, is, you know, got all my whiteboards that I have. I'll open up a new whiteboard and I'm about to join it on the web. And this is it. I can invite people to this whiteboard by creating a shared link or invite by email, but this is all I get with this whiteboard. I get four pens and an eraser. And if I click on the pens, I can't even change the color of the pens. So I get four pens and an eraser. Not very good. Thank you, Microsoft, but we're not going to use that. Okay, so the web-based interface wasn't very nice for us. So maybe what we would like to do is go into the Teams whiteboard and see how that looks. So let's start up a new meeting and you'll see me smiling as it comes up. And then I'll just turn off my video here and we'll have a meeting. So what I can do in the meeting here is I can go into sharing and sure enough, there's the Teams whiteboard, but this is a Mac and look at what happens here, right? It brings it up. I still just get the four pens and an eraser with a prompt saying, do you want to collaborate or present on the whiteboard? I'll just do it as a presentation whiteboard, but I'm not really, this isn't great, right? So if I go in here, I can, you know, do a few things, right? Export it out when I'm done, but this is really not what I want. So what I want to do here is stop presenting and I want to find a better way of doing things. Well, what I can do, and I've done this in a previous video, is if I share my iPad screen onto my Mac here, so now I have my iPad screen here, and I can open up the whiteboard app, whiteboard app. so just so you can see, it's just a regular iPad, and I go into my whiteboard. Notice on this whiteboard for iOS, I get all of the different things that I've demo demonstrated in other videos. So this gives me all of the features that I want of a full-fledged whiteboard, and then what I can do is in my Teams meeting, instead of going in to share with the built-in whiteboard, again that web-based one, which on the Mac is very, very poorly featured, I can share off my iPad. So now I'm actually sharing this screen with my students. And if I go in and if I was recording this, this meeting, so I can just go in here and I'll pop in and do start the recording here. If I go in and I grab this whiteboard and I can use my stylus, in my case, uh, my stylus is in the other room. So I'm actually just going to pop in here and I'll use my finger to go in and, and make some changes here. I'll thicken the pen there. Uh, it really wants me to use the stylus, so let me just grab another one here. So I can go in and I can write on the whiteboard 
and I can, this is an iPad Pro, by the way. So if I go in here and I can, you know, do whatever I want, have sticky notes in there, uh, text in there, whatever type of text I want in there. So you can see that I'm really, you know, really doing well with the iPad version of the whiteboard. I am sharing that out with the students. If I go down here, I'll just go back to Teams. I can stop recording here. So I'll stop the recording and I can stop sharing when I'm done with the iPad. And now I'm back to the regular Teams with my chat and all that sort of good stuff. So now what will happen is you'll see that the recording I did captured that nice iPad version of the whiteboard as opposed to me using one of the web-based ones. That's a bit of a rough workaround, but it just goes to show you that it can be done. So if you are a predominantly Mac user and you really want to use the Microsoft whiteboard, you don't want to use the web-based, you don't want to use the one that's built into Teams for Apple, you want to use this one here on the iOS, share it to your Mac screen, and then use it, record it, and everything is good. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that meeting. Once I leave that meeting, it's going to do the recording. Okay, so that meeting's been recorded to uh, stream. So if I go in here, you can see this is what the meeting captured. This is what it looked like for your students. So it shows you the meeting. I just have the section of the meeting where I'm working with a whiteboard. So... So there we go. So you can see that I'm working with it, and you can see that that's recorded for the students. This is what the students will see. They'll see my iPad running the whiteboard. Again, I can share it. I can have people come in and collaborate with it, but it's a pretty handy way of doing it. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you have it down, it's very easy. There you have it. The web-based application for Mac users is not very well featured. The Teams built-in whiteboard that we can share is really just the same application. It's not very good. So if we want a full-featured Microsoft whiteboard in an Apple environment, really what we're going to have to do is take the iOS version on an iPad, share that over to the Mac computer, and then share that out with our audience. Which, if you have the iPad, is great because it's actually quite nice to be able to use your stylus and write on your iPad and then have that shared out. So there's a lot of benefits to doing that anyways. However, if you don't have an iPad, I wouldn't run out and buy an iPad just so you can get a Microsoft whiteboard. That's a bit of an ask. So uh, if you found this video useful, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you if you know any colleagues or anybody that you think would benefit from seeing this video, share it out. If you have any other videos that you'd like me to make for you, comment down below. I'm always happy to do anything that relates to learning and technology, whether it's a PC, whether it's a Mac system, or any type of technology that helps us learn and communicate learning better. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.